Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. Nice to see you again. Today we're back in the fish room and I'm doing a lot of changes in the fish room. I'm changing things around, I'm moving tanks around. I've got loads of tanks broken down at the moment. I'm trying to arrange things that, that just work a little bit better for me. So move some tanks to make some grow out tanks for fish that I want to go on mega tank and just get things a little bit more organized. So while I'm in this giant state of disarray, what's the best thing I could possibly do? Go to a fish auction and buy some more fish. So at the weekend, I popped along to my local fish club auction. The club local to me is the Sheaf Valley Aquarist Society. And they hold an auction two or three, four times a year, something like that. It was in a new venue this time. Um, so I popped along. I didn't have a load of time. I only had a few hours. It's not that fish keepers are inherently unorganized, but the ones that are seem to form clubs and run auctions. I can only imagine what work goes in behind the scenes to run an auction, so I, I, I am being quite disparaging there, but there must be loads going on. There's quite popular, a load of people come from all over the country it seems. Uh, I met a few people who watch my videos, so hello if you're one of them. Um, but yeah, you need a venue with a lot of space. The general premise is people are invited to bring along their fish, put them up as lots in the auction, and then the club auctions them off. And they run through all the auctions. If you bring multiple boxes, they'll basically they'll do one box and then move on to the next lot and then they'll circle back around again. I was there for about three hours and I don't think I even got halfway through. They're probably still going on now. It's fairly lighthearted. It's um, not a serious affair or anything like that, but some things did grind my gears a little bit. There were loads of missed bids. At one point I was getting a complex, I thought they were missing my bids on purpose because they saw my last videos on the auction maybe, but it wasn't just me. There's loads of people got bids mixed. Um, the bidding structure is quite strange at these auctions. You'll bid on a lot, so it'll be, if you want some fish and you're against someone else and you bid a pound, they go two pound, three pound, four pound, five pound, five pound wins it. And if there's multiples of that fish or that lot, they'll say, how many do you want? And if you don't want all of them, then they go back to the next person. So it's actually in your favour if you don't win, because you get them cheaper. So where there are lots of fish of the same type, I've, I've seen it several times, I've even benefited from it myself sometimes, where if there are 10 bags of fish and the bidding goes up to £10 per bag or something like that, and the person wins them, they only want one, then they drop back to the next person who bid £9 and then drop back, drop. I've been in that situation where I've been like the fifth bidder and I've got five bags of fish for three pounds each, whereas the person that won got one bag of fish for 10 pounds each. So it's, it's a dangerous game to play, I guess, because if you want the fish, then you have to bid to get them, but it is what it is. Um, I don't want to sound too disparaging because there must be loads of work going on, organizing the venue, organizing all the lots, getting everything set up for everyone. Um, it was as smooth as could be, but the, my God, does it take a long time. There's, there's lots of, Oh, just wait a minute, we have to figure this out. Oh, I'm not sure what's in this box. A lot of, I don't know what this fish is. Um, but it's going to be the case because not all the fish keepers are experts in all fish, so they'll see things that they've never seen before. There's a lot of, right, let's start the bidding at two pound a bag. And you're like, what is it? You haven't told us what it is. Oh, uh, it's neon tetras. How many? Oh yeah, good point. Uh, five, five in a bag. And then they'll, if you win the bid, how many do you want? You're like, I don't know, how many have you got? So. But every single lot gets that as well. So th there could be some refinement, let's put it that way, but I'm very thankful, happy to support it, go along and pay my money because you can get some bargains at these things. So if you do have an auction, usually run by a fish club local to you, uh, pop along, check it out, support the club, if nothing else. I think it was a pound to get in and then you pay your fees for your, your wins, the, the things that you get. And if you have bred loads of fish, then they're a good place to get rid of them because it's generally fish keepers that turn up to these things. They're not gonna be sold to Tom, Dick or Harry off the street who's not going to look after them properly and yeah it's, it's a good way to meet new people, find out about new things um, or just go and sit on your own and you don't have to be bothered by anyone, it's very informal. So while that said, I did film me unboxing all the goodies that I got, I didn't get all that much because I wasn't there for very long and like I say it takes forever. Um, but I forgot to turn my microphone on which is you know I've only been doing this for 10 years. so. I'll play some videos of me showing you the boxes of the fish that I got in the bags that they came in. Everything was very good. I ended up purchasing, I think I got a couple of bags of Autosynclus catfish because I do like some autos and they do good jobs for me. Um, I got a few cherry barbs because they were going cheap and I've always fancied trying them. 
I got um, a couple of plants and things like that, uh, some more super rare bristle noses to expand the diversity of my breeding stock, but all very small, but all good prices that I was happy to pay, cheaper than you would see in the, the shops. And even some cases there's quite a lot of rare fish go up, so it depends who turns up and who brings fish. There's a lot of regular brown ancestors. 3,000 of them, who wants them? So, you know, if you want to fill a tank, there's good places to go because you can get big bags of guppies and things like that, dead cheap. Um, but also some intricate and rare lots as well, but I didn't get any of them. Um, I got one fish that I was really happy to get. I got a, a black ghost knife fish, which is a good size. Um, but unfortunately, that has now passed away. It got there in the bag and when I brought it in, I floated it on my tank for a little while and it just dropped all its color. And by the time I got it into a quarantine tank, it, yeah, it was just lifeless. So unfortunately, I'm a bit gutted about that one, but I can't fault the, the, the bag was packed nicely, it was packed correctly, plenty of oxygen in the bag, that kind of thing. You can never tell how long they've been there. I don't know whether the seller came from a long way away and maybe they've been in the bag for a long time. Um, but yeah, it's, it happens every now and again. It's very rare that I lose a fish. Um, that quickly after getting it, but there must have just been something going on with it that I couldn't unfortunately sort out. So I've got all these new fish. I want to say thank you to the Sheaf Valley Aquarist Society for putting on the auction. Um, and they put on a better auction than I do because I don't put on one at all. So I've really got no right to complain about it. I just wish it went a little bit quicker and a little bit smoother. But that said, it is a good day out and I would thoroughly recommend it to anyone. So now, let's have a wee look at some of the disasters that we've got going on in this thing that I call a fish room. So here we've got Humphrey's tank. And if my eyes don't deceive me, and you probably can't tell because of the terrible reflections that we've got in there, it looks clearer. Um, I've said in the last video that I'm going for that floating in air effect and I think I might be getting there. If I could just get rid of the reflections, you might be able to see that, but I might have to come back at night time when all the lights are off and film this. But yeah, it does look super clear. And the reason I mention that is because the last video we talked about this thing, the Fluval FX UVC inline clarifier. I'm giving one of these away. So if you want to win this, go and look at my last video on this. Uh, and you can get a chance to win this. If you get in early before this Friday's live stream, leave a comment on the previous video, not on this video. Feel free to comment on this video, but leave a comment in the previous video. Uh, watch the last one to find out what the rules are, etc. But you can win one of them. And yeah, it wasn't the murkiest tank in the world when I started, but it certainly does look clear. Humphrey's enjoying it anyway. So that's that. We've not really had too many changes here. This tank here, I've started to break down and clean out and got bored and moved on to something else. But this is getting set up for my discus. I'm bringing my discus down from the main house. So the discus tank is in the hallway, which is a cold, large hallway. It's really hard to heat and it just costs me a fortune to heat over winter. So I'm going to winter the discus in here um, because this room is heated. It's ridiculously hot all the time. So it'll be a lot cheaper to house them in here and keep them. And I'll get to see them more often as well because that's that's where I work over there and I'll get to see them more often when they're down here. So I'm getting this cleaned out and ready to go. This tank here, you can see, no longer is here. So if I spin you around and don't make you sick, I've moved that tank over there and that's going to be my grow out tank. I've got in there the small um, silver dollars and a couple of other fish that I'm growing out for mega tank which needs a bit of a wipe because it's got some algae. Maybe I should run a clarifier on this as well. Um, but yeah, what I want to do is all the fish that I want to put in there, I mean, they're, they're hard to acquire at that size. So when I bought these little silver dollars here, um, let's see if I can zoom in on them. Lovely little fish, but little. So I'm going to grow them out in here. And this is a decent sized tank. So that can run and grow them out until they're such a size that they won't immediately get gobbled up by this lot. So I'm not quite sure what I'm going to do with the rest of this other than fix that light that keeps flickering. Um, here I've got some endlers and betta fish and things like that. I might get several grow outs here or a couple of grow outs and smaller tanks. I'm not sure. I'm still thinking about that. But for now, that's that done. That was a bit of a, a bit of a chore. It's just under four feet long, that tank. So it should be a good size for a grow out to keep things going. And that means I've taken that tank out of there. I've taken the tanks that were over there and outside, stripped them down. That tank's next, that's got to go. And that's going to give me this six foot span 
which I might build another mega tank or a, a mega mini tank, mini mega tank, who knows. Another tank, a plywood tank with a glass front that I think I can get a lot cheaper if I build it myself and learn from all the mistakes I made with mega tank and get that in there. Um, in general, probably going to leave this side alone and this side alone, but what I want to do is have another big tank there. I'll probably leave this tank here. Well, I might get rid of a few of them. Maybe just keep three of these and have another larger one, like a three foot tank or something, because I've got my Fahaka puffer up here. He's going to need to go into a bigger tank soon. Um, and these I can use as breeding tanks. I've moved my Zebra Daniels into here. I'm really quite enjoying these. I don't think they get enough credit for being as cool as they are or looking as good as they do. So these are kind of, they are breeding tanks. So I might set one of them up as, because I've got a discus that won't stop spawning, a pair of discus that won't stop spawning, and the eggs seem viable and then they just all get eaten and once they get past regular stage. So maybe give them that as a, a breeding tank. And yeah, I just don't know yet what to do with these. Maybe a couple of bigger tanks or maybe keep two of the smaller ones and one big one. Yeah, this is the, the problem I have is I start doing these projects before I've really thought them through, which is a stupid way to do it. So yeah, it's all a bit changey in here uh, and I'm not quite sure what the final plan is going to look like. So I'm going to approach it bit by bit. Um, really focusing now on what I want the fish room to be and what I want it to do for me in terms of what fish I want to keep ultimately and get a few projects going. I, I enjoy some projects so I can get stuck into them and if I just get it set up the way I want it, we'll get there. Come along on a Friday night and join me and discuss these things, maybe even give me some ideas or some tips of how to do that and what it is so I can really focus because that's the thing that I can't do is focus on one thing. So I'm constantly moving one tank, changing on to another, back to another. I need to sit and plan it down. So I'll be doing that over the next few days, trying to get a grip on what it is I want to achieve. But if you're interested in winning this, go and look at my last video. Um, there's still a chance to win. This Friday, if, this, if you're watching this after this video comes out, um, you've got a couple of days. We'll be doing a live draw on my live stream uh, to see who gets to win this. And I hope I haven't put you off fish auctions because there must be loads of work and effort goes into putting these things on and then I come along and go, oh, it's really badly organised. It's not true. I, I have ridiculous expectations. People are putting days and days of effort into these things to get them up and running. So they really are useful to the hobby, beneficial for the hobby in general because you get all these people together and you can swap good quality fish around. Um, and meet new people if you're into that kind of thing, that's fine. But for all the drawbacks, and little tweaks that could be made, I don't want my moaning nature to put you off going to your local fish auction. I've only ever been to this one, so I don't know how this compares to other ones. So I'll be interested to know from the comments if you've been to other associations fish auctions and you think no that doesn't sound like mine mine's run like this it's much better let me know in the comments or even better come along to the friday night live stream 9 p.m uk time tell me maybe i should be traveling to other auctions and experiencing different societies putting on their auctions but give them a go give them a chance i think they're worth it it is a day out they are hours and hours long especially this one um but i think it's it's a good deal you don't have to give up too much to go and get some good bargains. Um, with that said, like I say, let me know in the comments if you've got any other ideas or auctions that I should check out, visit other societies, that kind of thing. Let me know. And if you said hello to me at the auction at the weekend, hello back. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one, if not Friday. Bye.